All right, hello and welcome. So thank you for those who are joining live and super excited for those who are gonna watch the replay. So yeah, you are at Unlock Six, Fig Six Figure Success. So we're gonna talk all about how purpose-driven marketing fuels your wellness business. So we'll get into what that means and what that looks like. Yeah, so thank you so much for being here today. Just in case you don't know much about myself or Alana, I'm Toria, one, one half of Market Me Strategy. We are marketing experts, strategists. We've done social media content creation. We've managed accounts. We've grown accounts. We've worked with clients that are solopreneurs and one-man teams all the way up to you know, big businesses with really large marketing budgets. So we've done quite a bit in the marketing world. And on our kind of our, our life, our personal side of things, we are super passionate about wellness and living like a life that brings you, you know, joy and it's balanced and, and fulfilling. And it's not just about, you know, the hustle and grind, but it's also not just like ignoring everything and just hoping for the best. And so having that blend of taking care of yourself, your own well-being so that you can be super impactful in the wellness space and help people and just the ripple effect from that can grow and grow. So we're really excited to be here. You can check us out at Market Me Strategy on Instagram or .com and yeah, get to know us a bit better. We'd love to, to meet you. So today, what can you expect? Uh, we're going to cover kind of three main zones. We're going to talk about discovering your business purpose and bringing things back to that and how it is the core of everything you do and how that ripples over into showing up authentically and how you can bring storytelling into your brand, into your marketing and how that leads to, you know, building a community, growing your business, of course, growing yourself and kind of reaching those, those goals that you have. All right. So first things first, we obviously we're not letting you just sit on the other side and listen. So Alana is going to lead us in an amazing exercise. Amazing. Okay. So we always like to start off with a mindset moment. If you've been in our courses or other webinars, you will know, but because today's topic is unlocking six figures, we are starting off with a mindset moment around money and money beliefs. So if you have a journal or you can write it in your laptop, I'd like you to take the next three minutes to write down the answers to this questions, just so you can get a pulse check on your belief systems around money and where you are currently in your mindset. So first question is, where do you feel abundant? And this does not need to be financially. Like you can feel abundant personally, um, you know, with friends, family, loved ones, you could feel abundant in many different areas of your life. It doesn't just have to be money. So write down where you feel the most abundant. How do you feel when you make a purchase? So do you feel like I shouldn't be doing this? Do you feel guilty? Do you feel grateful? What does it feel like every time you make a purchase? Does making millions of dollars feel realistic to you? Do you think that's something that you can do in this lifetime? Do you feel like you can achieve making millions? Do you believe you need to work more to make more money? So does time equal money for you or does money come to you no matter the effort? And finally, how do you feel when you make a large purchase? So similar to the question above, do you feel like it's a treat? Do you feel like you deserve 
it or do you feel like, oh no, I shouldn't be doing this? Okay. We will move on. Stepping into your six figure business. So these are proven ways to create sales and success. And this is again with mindset. So similar to the exercise that we just did, you want to identify what your limiting beliefs are and what your negative self-talk is. So do you have imposter syndrome? Do you feel like you're not worthy? Do you feel like making millions isn't possible for you where you are right now? Like where are your mental midgets? Identify those so that you can address them. And then once you've done that, you want to meditate, visualize, and say affirmations against what your subconscious beliefs are as an entrepreneur. So if you think I'm not ready to make millions, I don't have it all figured out yet, making millions isn't possible for the career path or my current title, meditate, visualize and say affirmations opposite of that and continue to do that. And once you've figured out those metal, mental midgets, you've meditated, you visualize and you say affirmations, you want to embody what that entrepreneur that you're thinking about would look like. So you're not going to be the person that you are today. You want to embody that six figure entrepreneur, the one who has it all figured out, the one whose money flows to them easily. Yeah, <clears throat> exactly. Your subconscious runs your whole life. So we need to work against and build a subconscious belief that you are the six figure entrepreneur already and live last but not least live in that end state. So live in that state and reflect in that state. Stop thinking about the past. Stop thinking about the future. Think about who you want to be, who you want to show up as and start doing that. Now, a lot of people like we've heard the term fake it till you make it. And that's truly what you need to do. Like act as if you already have hundreds of millions of dollars, act as if you already have hundreds of millions of fans, act as if you've already helped hundreds of millions of people embody that state every single day and watch it come to you. Okay. What is purpose driven marketing? So what is purpose-driven marketing and why is it important specifically when it comes to wellpreneurs? We will be going through that in the next few slides. So the importance of purpose-driven marketing specifically with wellpreneurs and entrepreneurs is that it builds a meaningful connection. So by championing, by championing, oh, I can't say championing. You know what I mean? a cause or purpose, you can resonate with consumers on an emotional level. And this emotional level can lead to a stronger brand loyalty or loyalty to your business. And it's extremely invaluable for businesses in their early stage. And especially as wellpreneurs, there usually is like a lot of emotion tied to what you're doing. The reason why we're in it is to help with that like emotional cause. So by championing that cause or purpose, you can easily create that connection with your audience. And it doesn't matter if you have an audience of like five people, It that five people could get you your revenue goal, could get you where you want to be, like create that connection, speak to their heart, speak to their emotion and build that connection. And then beyond profit, I mean, I think a lot of us are in this not for profit. So while profit is essential, standing behind a purpose and being confident in your opinion allows others to trust you and your word. Profit comes by building that emotional connection, by standing behind something. So 
this is helping you build trust with your audience as well as conviction and who you are as an entrepreneur and then authenticity and trust so by demonstrating a commitment to a cause or purpose wellpreneurs can build trust with their target audience which is crucial for new business and trying to establish themselves i think a lot of people believe that the market is saturated that you you know there's so many different businesses so many different people within their industry but if you can demonstrate commitment to your purpose and speak to your target audience consistently with emotion giving your word giving your opinion you're going to be able to establish yourself outside of everyone else in your niche and you're also going to be able to build that trust and that authenticity you'll be able to attract your right customer or client then increased engagement so purpose-driven wellpreneurs often see higher levels of engagement from their audience this can translate to more social shares more word of mouth referrals and a more engaged customer base and most importantly long-term resistance so wellpreneurs with a purpose-driven approach prioritize sustainability and long-term goals ensuring alignment with their mission this clear vision guides tr strategic decisions and provides stability and direction during challenging times so when you're standing behind a purpose you never have to think what's my next step what's my next move you have a goal you have a purpose and that creates a clear roadmap and vision for every step you take for the future of your business does anyone have questions on that yeah feel free to jump in the chat at any point if you have a question or for your little hand up emoji thing we can unmute you but no i think you did a great job of explaining that it's um this next actually slide will help kind of clarify that with what it means in your specific case as well so again we're going to get you to kind of pull out a pen and paper ideally or a google doc will work too and spend a few minutes here thinking on these questions and jotting what comes to mind no need to you know overthink it or stress about it it's just kind of that gut um, reaction of what comes up for you when you hear and read these so the first one here is asking yourself like why you started the business in the first place what was the driving force or beh passion behind it so sometimes going back to that original root of why you've started it can help you know bring back those things of positive feelings of feeling grateful that you had the opportunity to even start a business grateful that you have ex expertise in whatever area that you can share and you know helps people because sometimes we can get bogged down right of where things are at now we're not where we thought we would be all these kind of thoughts so just bringing it back to what was that driving passion originally and just kind of note that down and that might change over time in your entrepreneurial journey it probably will but going back to like who you were when you first started can can help spark that joy again so after you've kind of written that down then go into these other questions so the next one is listing down the values that are non-negotiable for either yourself or your business or kind of both i'm sure there'll be tons of overlap especially in the wellness space lots of you you know like very much live and practice what you preach and so you probably have some core values so put, writing those down and even putting those into like Alana mentioned earlier into some form of affirmation or mantra you can state can just keep you grounded in in that purpose and also helps you you know use that as a filter of is this aligned with my values then yes it's a yes let's go forth with that opportunity or whatever that might be so the next one is thinking about the impact you want to make in the world or the legacy you want to leave behind like if you could just dream infinitely and you didn't get in your own way like what would that impact look like would it be you know having a, a significant i don't know piece of your story like change someone's life in some way 
Is it a, the sheer number of people you might be reaching? Like, what is it that just really gets you excited? That could be like your stamp that you leave on this world. I'll give you a couple moments here to kind of write those down. The next question is draft like a vision. So kind of get clear that of the future you want to create. So this can sometimes be overwhelming depending on if you're a natural dreamer or visionary. And if you're not just think from, or if someone was, you know, writing a biography about you, what would you hope could be in there? Right? So this is where you can start to let yourself think those big big and maybe more scary things, but really paint that vision and write it down in, in like description feeling. What does it feel like? What does it look like? What does it uh, sound like? All those kind of pieces. And then the last piece is thinking about, you know, any challenges in the world, movements, issues, like things that are going on that resonate with you, that kind of get under your skin or that you're like, I know I can help in this area. Like those pieces, someone else thinks the same thing. And so, so bringing those to light just will help present those opportunities of connecting with people to help solve that problem. And like, where does your expertise come into play? Like we are marketers first and foremost, that's what we've done. That's what we've, we know. So we can apply that skill to helping you know, people in the wellness industry, because we know that ripple effect will help more people, you know, get in tune to themselves, live a better life, all these pieces, right? So give you one last minute here to note down anything that comes to mind. Can also take a screenshot of this and come back to journaling on this or even just visualizing on these pieces. All right. So hopefully the answers to your questions, to those questions kind of help you understand like how, when we're grounded in our purpose and we have some insight of, you know, the gap between what strategy, what things can we do to match that with our audience's needs, right? So if you have this purpose, but no one, no one knows or cares about it, like that's not going to be a business yet, right? So it's finding that sweet spot of like, if you have this purpose, this expertise, this passion, the odds are there's so many people out there that need it. And so it's like finding those people and then that's where you grow a community, grow a business. So yeah, looking at your audience, like what are their needs and pain points and desires and thinking about how can your business, how can you act on that and demonstrate that through either your own life choices or what your business stands behind and if your purpose revolves around, you know, a cause or an issue or a change you want to see in the world, putting that out there, because like I mentioned before, the people can relate to that and they want to support something that feels bigger, right? Everyone is looking for a way to, to be a part of something. Okay. So... Aligning purpose with audience needs, again, create opportunities for your audience to participate in initiatives that, that reflect your purpose. So this could be community projects, charitable, or uh, <clears throat> su sustainability efforts. And then continuously monitor how your audience perceives and responds to your purpose-driven initiatives. Use feedback to refine your approach and ensure better alignment. So this could be through polls, quizzes, surveys, not only that, but man monitoring your analytics for whatever you've done. So did you get more followers? Did your email list grow? Did your website traffic go up? Monitor your efforts and see where you're getting the most bang for your buck. Not only analytically, but also personally, like, did that give you more passion and purpose? Or did that take from your energy? And then trust that the results will come the seeds you plant now often take a while to break ground. And on that, a lot of us plant seeds, but we don't water them. 
So you need to plant the seed, water the seed, and then wait for it to break ground. Don't plant the seed, say it's planted and then forget about it. It's not gonna grow unless you water it. That's a perfect segue, <laughs> you set me up so well, to the next kind of section of our masterclass right today is, is we have that purpose. We have these, you know, like these passions, these things that are more intangible, but like Lana was saying is when you start watering those seeds, like obviously first you need to see, you know, there's nothing will ever grow. And that's that like purpose piece. But once you start watering that seed, that's when you can see true growth and that's coming to those pieces like the strategy. So you can think of these three C's as three ways you are watering <laughs> that seed is through your content, through collaboration and community. And so first content is super important and, and a beast as we're going to kind of drill down into that in a moment here. But first I wanted to touch on the other two C's collaboration and community. And so why you should focus on on these pieces in your mission and in your growth if you don't you know already believe this to be true yet i think you will after this this talk is basically partnerships right is is means impact is your amplified right if if one person's doing it versus a, a group of doing it obviously the results are going to be exponential so when you have these kind of strategic alliances whether it's with other organizations that share your cause, or even sometimes, you know, you're, maybe you're just starting out. And so you can't be like those giant corporations and give X percent to whatever, blah, blah, blah. But you could help promote their, you know, walk, their 5k walk to support something that means something to you. Right. So there's always ways to, to have some form of partnership and amplify the impact you want to make. Okay. And so then the next piece is that credibility and trust. So that's huge. As you know, people aren't going to buy from you if they don't trust you, if they don't think you can actually give them the outcome they desire. And you can tell people, you know, I can do this. I can do this. I promise I can do this, but it's much more powerful when it's coming from another collaborator or from your community. So if you build into these pieces, being part of a community, collaborating with other businesses and influencers and having them, you know, kind of raise you up and spotlight you for what you can do is, is huge for your growth. One step further is putting on events, hosting events, or being part in attending events, getting into the community on a more personal level is a game changer, especially as you know, everything is so virtual. And so now going kind of back and, and re-meeting people the good old fashioned way builds those like lasting connections where someone will actually be a raving fan when they hear of a, someone who has a problem, they know you can answer, they'll actually recommend you because it's just deeper. We are, you know, we're meant to be in physical space with each other. And so like going to those events really can help that. And then of course, things like content sharing, collaborating on creating content can e can even soften the workload, but also make that piece of content that much more interesting. You can be on other people's podcasts. You could start a podcast and have guests. You could co-author a blog. Like there's so many ways to kind of create together, which usually ends up producing a better quality piece of content, one that's more interesting, plus one that gets, you know, twice, if not more reach because you're now leveraging two full audiences. Um, and then the last piece that kind of falls into this area is accountability. Um, so when you have a community or collaboration or a group of other entrepreneurs, or even just your, your clients, like they hold you to a piece of accountability of returning to that mission, staying on track, all these things that help you. Yeah. Continuing watering that seed. Okay. So the next piece here. So we're going into storytelling uh, and storytelling can be one of the most effective pieces of marketing. So it's touching on that content topic again. People are 22 times more likely to remember information told in a story than in point form. That's why we're taught like everything in stories when we're young. It allows your audience to connect with you and see you as relatable. And this goes for anything. Like if you're, if you're doing a pitch to investors, you want that pitch to be a story. If you're talking to someone, they say, tell me about your business. 
you want that to be a story. Like you want to be utilizing stories all the time. So we're going to get into how to do that. I mean, I think we learned a lot in elementary school how to do that, but it's been forgotten about. So what we're seeing as effective is at the beginning of the story, you want to generate a problem-based hook. And the best stories come from experience, reflection, and challenges. So you need to live your life. In order to find stories, you need to be able to go out there and live a life and learn a lesson. And then you want to set the context and introduce the problem or the challenge. This way, people are automatically guessing how is this story going to end? Like if you start a story and people aren't curious to hear how it ends, then you've already failed. They're not going to want to listen. How you're going to structure it. So you need it there to be a beginning, middle and end. Obviously, you kind of want to do some foreshadowing in the beginning and you want to create conflict or like a climax that you need to get over to get your audience to care, evoke emotion, become invested and relate to you as a character. For execution, you want to maintain a consistent tone and control the pacing to keep the audience engaged. What I mean about that is like, see, so if it's not an important fact, you're going to talk really fast. You're like, and then this happened and then and then when it gets to the conflict or the foreshadow, you're going to want to slow down the pace, kind of leave a pause. And you're going to want to use emotions, elements of surprise, joy, sadness, and inspiration, as well as metaphors and analogies. The dumber and the easier you make the story to understand, the better impact it's going to have. You're going to want your audience to get the aha moments like, oh, so if you're using analogies and metaphors, it's a lot easier for them to break it down and understand in their brain. And then the result obviously is lessons and key takeaways, something of value and why you're telling the story. So where, where, what can your audience take from it and what can they use in their real life and, or why would they want to invest in you through that story. We're going to give an example. And I just want to let you guys know that I am not a good reader. So <laughs> I don't know how I got this part. It's like in class when the teachers, okay, you can read this section. I'm like, no, 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 no. Okay, here we go. So here's an example. I'm Alex, a small business owner who runs a local bookstore store. For years, I've been struggling to keep up with the digital age. People aren't just walking into bookstores like they used to. I tried everything, sales, events, and even small cafe inside the store, but nothing seemed to work. I was on the verge of closing down and it felt like a piece of my soul was dying with the business. One night I was sitting alone in the empty store surrounded by unsold books when my phone buzzed. It was a message from my customer, Lily, who used to frequent the store. She was sharing a photo of her daughter reading a book she'd bought from my store years ago. The message read, thank you for making our lives richer with stories. It hit me then. My bookstore was more than just a business. It was a community hub, a place where people found joy, comfort, and even friendship. Inspired, I decided to pivot my business model. I turned the bookstore into a community space, offering book clubs, writing workshops, and storytelling sessions for kids. I even started a small library corner where people could read for free. Slowly but surely, the store filled, sorry, started filling up again, not just with customers, but with laughter, discussions, and the magical scent of fresh coffee and old books. Now, every time I unlock the store in the morning, I don't just see a business. I see a thriving community. I see kids excited about reading, adults finding solitude in literature, and families bonding over shared stories. And I realize that sometimes success isn't just about making money. It's about making a difference. Oh my gosh. Yay for me. So as you can see, yeah, as you can see, <laughs> 
there was a really good use of like imagery, emotions, memories, scent, everything to make you feel like you knew Alex, you could see his bookstore and how Alex created community within his dying business to bring success. Amazing. Okay, so there's no beautiful transition to get into data, but we wouldn't be good marketing coaches if we didn't bring together this last piece. So kind of going back to the, you know, your you plant the seed of your purpose, you water it and nurture it and give it sunlight and all these pieces to help it grow. But sometimes, you know, something comes up and you need to fact check yourself. You need to know why is it wilting a little over here? So making optimizations, making changes, it's, it's kind of this bridge between using the data or the insights, the, it can even be like the qualitative assessment to make some, some shifts. This is how you get to that, like that six figure place. That's where you take all these learnings of your purpose and you kind of like just get that tipping point of where you can kind of polish things up and really start to see success. And then also you, be, you become more of someone who can learn from what you've done and therefore everything becomes easier the more you do it again. So some ways that are a little bit more attainable than you don't need a giant, you know, 10 page spreadsheet and all these codes and all this stuff. You just need to be able to look at you know other creators other entrepreneurs in your niche and see what performed best for them like that's a good way to to kind of self-assess like maybe you don't have a huge audience yet because you're getting started or maybe you're just you know you're just kind of dipping your toe into business at this point like learn from others and in and obviously of course apply that to yourself as well what comes naturally what is working what do people you know take action on that's the stuff you want to do more of so kind of step two after the sort of studying approach is to analyze things so that's looking at you know different analytics it can be if you are a little savvy it can be going into your google analytics if part of your um, business is set up through like your website um it can be things like if you do lots of your sales and marketing on instagram it can be looking at your insights and seeing where was you know, what got saved or shared? Why do I think it was finding those trends, things like that. So just being a, a aware and tune and kind of doing that self-reflection. And then of course, repeating this regularly so that you can continue to reuse your, the content, the stories, the marketing pieces that are working for you and kind of, you know, shift away for things that aren't worth the effort and aren't giving you results and, you know, repurpose the pieces that are taking that are that are giving people that action. So by that I mean when we go back, everything, take the slide, you know, with the with the filter of it still has to be from that purpose-driven place. And so content that comes from your purpose is always going to be on brand and align with your audience and all of those pieces. And so now we're just looking at it from how can I say that a slightly different way or how can I try it in a different format a different hook or different order, just so that you can keep um, engaging your audience in a way that's still aligned with that purpose. Okay, so feel free to ask any questions in the chat about any of these pieces. We didn't wanna dive too deep into that, but after all this, like, you know, what's kind of, you have to ask yourself, like, what's next for your wellness business? What's, yeah, what's, where, where do you go from here? So we have some options for you. And we want to talk about like what that could look like. So I'm just going to reiterate this because I did, I did want to say it and I said it in the chat, but I know we're recording this for a few people. When it comes to storytelling and creating more content, you don't have to just do that one piece of content one time. You need to think of yourself as like a comedian or a storyteller. You never just say that joke or that story once you continuously test it and reiterate it to see where it lands best. So don't think one and done. Think one and how can I iterate on it to make it even better? Now, with that being said, do you find yourself nodding to any of these? Spending hours trying to figure out the best marketing channel for your business? 
feeling like your voice is lost in the crowd, uncertain if your message is reaching its intended audience, overwhelmed by the vast digital landscape and its ever evolving nature, questioning why top tier services, sorry, why your top tier services aren't seeing growth and enga the engagement you anticipated. <clears throat> Your strategies should be simple, yet intriguing, sustainable when thriving, and successful while still unique. So that brings us to our signature package that we know can help you, and it's called the Market Well Strategy Package. So this is designed with all of our insights from our 10 plus years of marketing in all these areas, and then working with well wellness businesses and as well as being like number one wellness customers and we've kind of combined it all these insights to create a package that will really help you you know get clear on where you need to go and how to get there and then we help you along the way to implement so it includes a market and competitor analysis so it's gaining insights into you know where you stand what tends to work in your industry what are your competitors doing? How do they position themselves? What makes you unique? All of those pieces. And then we go into a really collaborative strategy session, which is my personal favorite part of it. And I've always seen such clarity and growth from entrepreneurs after they go through just this session alone, just the kind of questions we ask and the pieces we bring to the table of, of how to, you know, craft a strategy that's actually aligned with yes, your goals, yes, your audience, but also like your strengths and, you know, what fires you up. It's no fun to have a strategy that, you know, follow this path, but it's like, you know, just, just drains your soul. It's like, no, we want to create a strategy with you that's going to fill all those pieces, whether you're a one man team and we need to take that into consideration and chop things up accordingly, or if we can start outsourcing pieces, like, so we get on the same page with your vision and your audience and then help build you that action plan and then throughout this process there is of course a ton of support from us on you know the hows and the ins and outs of applying everything so when you work with us on, on through a market well strategy package these are the kind of results you will gain things like more quality leads and bookings so not just more numbers for the sake of numbers, but more people who actually care about what you have to offer. Increased visibility and reach. So we'll help you with things like strategic collaborations or setting up funnels or things that make sense for your strategy. And so it will help grow your reach, get you in front of new people. And then of course, like growth and profitability is important. You can make, you can't only make a big impact if your business grows in a sustainable way. So we want to give you an action plan that is manageable and actually doable to get you all those results. So yeah, so the Mark Well strategy package gets to the root of what makes you and your offer irresistible and how to consistently communicate that to your ideal clients. So. If this is intriguing to you, if you want to learn more, you can visit our Calendly link and book a free 30 minute audit meeting where we'll talk about your goals, your needs and help you and just assess if this package is even right for you. It's a no obligation call and you'll get lots of tidbits out of it in itself. Um, and we can also answer any questions you might have about that package. And so we'll throw that link in the chat in a second here. And also, I wanted to thank you guys for attending. And before you go, we have a few special things for you. We have a bonus, our blueprint, which is super packed of value, kind of talks through, walks you through a lot of what we talked about today in a more like doing it way so that you have this plan, this foundation. And then also, hi. Okay. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for a wonderful presentation. It was so much learning in on each slides i have one question related to uh, like the creation of like the trust and create uh, credibility for like the wellness in the wellness mm -hmm. space when you're putting things when you're like the wellness space is surrounded on the like the online world so what how, what would you like recommend in the check boxes that need to be ticked for creating that 
trust and creative credibility with the people or the customers that mm -hmm. uh, you are serving on the in the wellness space on the, yeah. on the online world no i think that makes a lot of sense so you're kind of asking like the, like what are from like a marketing standpoint some pieces that will bring and help grow trust with with your audience if your audience is you know people in this wellness industry i think for sure what always comes to mind for trust building is is you know two pieces it's like showing up authentically as yourself so not trying to be you know someone else or you see someone else oh they they say this so like i'm gonna do like when we say you know assess your competitors and things like that it's not to then be them it's to find what's truly unique and you know true to you so i think being authentic it's a slower play of building trust but it will definitely help and then the number one way more strategically is to showcase other people speaking about you so whether that's your clients results you know putting together a mini case study of what you did for this client and how you got them they came to you with problem x and you took them to the solution they wanted right more than just a one line testimonial but if you can dig a little deeper like you know going back to the storytelling slides and tell the story of the problem they had their journey with you and where they got to those stories are very memorable and they build that credibility and trust right it's like that proof because not everyone has you know thousands you can't say like here's my you know 10,000 students i've worked with and they all right like that's not realistic for where everyone's at but you can choose a story of one person and really like feature that and really tell it from an emotional point lana is anything else coming to mind with you in the arena of trust or credibility <clears throat> I'm sure one thing I'll say as I'm, as you're thinking, cause I just, thought, um, you probably heard before the marketers, you know, equation of like, they need to know, like, and trust you. Right. And so like, no, just means like, no, you exist. Right. And then the like piece is like that showing your personality. They actually like have an interest in what you need. Like if you, you know, if for, for you, if you're, if you offer like website development for wellness entrepreneurs, if you know if someone over here doesn't have a business never wants to then obviously they can't like you in that way because it doesn't apply right so like that's a filter and then the trust piece is is really what we emphasize and so yeah like we mentioned before the authenticity the storytelling the showcasing your clients and your community is probably the three biggest pillars i'm trying to think off the top of my head if there's smaller more tactical things that come to mind yeah, sorry, Alana, was there anything you, you wanted to mention? No, I would just say, like, try to show up as yourself on stories. Like, it's it's uncomfortable and it's hard, but try to talk to the camera and show up as yourself and be who you are. Show your behind-the-scenes work and then show your portfolio. And then if you're attending any local community events, like, obviously, you can hit a global scale, but... If you're going to any local wellness events, post that you're doing that to show that you're active in the community and that you're invested in the community that way, that would be the ways I think would be best for you is testimonials behind the scenes, you talking to the camera, saying like, even your founder story, like, why are you focusing on wellness websites? Why are you focusing in this specific niche? What's your purpose behind that? pinning that to your profile, like, or having it on your website as a video that immediately is going to help people trust, know, and like you. And that really like, you know, echoes what we've been talking about is coming back to that piece of being grounded in the purpose because people like feel that even, and then like, it'll come out in your content and marketing. And especially like if you're, you know, one of the ways you can build trust is this like concept of specializing or niching right so it's like if you're if you're known for you're like all, all i do is this zone then it's like okay i am like the thorough expert in that area versus like the flip of like trying to you know do everything for everyone it can be harder than to communicate why you're the best at you know that thing so when you stay true to the core purpose then you're you're reiterating that over and over and you're showing up to everyone who comes across your path as the person that you go to for that.
And that's when you can start to get word of mouth and referrals because it's clear to people. Like, even if I don't apply to your service, if I hear someone who would, I actually can refer because I know, I know it's not like, oh, he'll do anything on all these, right? So I think using that purpose kind of filter can, can really bleed over into building trust and credibility. Um, yeah, no, really great question. Does that answer your question or any follow-up questions? <laughs> Th thanks thanks a lot yeah that definitely uh, answers the question and it brings that like those uh, important points that we need to, to be like how authentically we show up on the online platforms and be uh, those content are more like purpose driven towards that niche uh, thank you thank you so much mm -hmm. okay. yeah yeah and like that collaboration community slide is part of that uh, recipe for for trust and for making those sales because when you you know if you're someone hears about you on a podcast that's all about you know this zone of expertise it it's by default they can't help but think like oh well you know someone else is talking about them that must mean they they know what they're talking about right so it's like all those little pieces are that watering of that seed <laughs> amazing so Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much guys for attending. If anything else comes up, we would love to get to know you on a more one-on-one -on -one level. Again, I'm Toria, my partner's Alana, and yeah, thank you for being here. Enjoy the rest of your day.